the specific trajectory of the first flight phase of the back handspring. Here we're going to do a few exercises in order to highlight the importance of the complete push in the legs and the lifting of the hips in a trajectory that is much more vertical than for the back handspring on the floor. With this setup, the goal is to get the gymnast to coordinate the movements of the arms, chest and legs in the push in order to land in open position and especially to feel this opening of the hips toward the ceiling. It's also a way to show that it's possible to jump while pushing hard without turning fast. Here too we'll make sure that the legs are squeezed shut, that the gymnast is looking toward the visual reference point and that she's feeling the contraction of the adductors and buttocks, even when she's stopped on top of the roller. Then we'll add on to the exercise by removing the blocks under the roller. This will allow the gymnast to reach the handstand in opening position. This makes it possible to keep the point of reference on the lifting of the pelvis and to practice opening the shoulders by lengthening and to learn to split the legs late by moving the forward leg. The back leg stays open against the roller. The main disadvantage of this drill is that the roller gets in the gymnast's way when she swings her arms back before jumping. You need to have her spread her arms slightly. You can start correcting possible errors in leg position in the split. The sooner gymnasts become aware of the correct positions, the faster they'll progress later on. Finally, you can add on all the way up to the back handspring with step out. This will help the gymnast understand the overall order of the movements. Now, so as to start to approach the actual rhythm of the back handspring and to still require the lift, we'll start practicing the flick flack with the landing on a higher surface, around 20 to 30 centimeters. The goal of these drills is of course to get the gymnast to aim for a high point, but also to control her inversion speed. In trying to go high, a gymnast will often turn fast or too much and land on the hands with the shoulders pointed too much toward the landing point. This is why you'll have her do flick flacks by turning over toward the starting point. First is the flick flack handstand followed by a forward roll. Generally, you should start off spotting this exercise. You can learn more about this in the chapter on spotting. This exercise will get the gymnast to pace herself, find the correct trajectory, and perfectly coordinate the movements of takeoff and opening. In addition, the muscular effort on the landing, whether in the shoulders or the rest of the body in opening position, is particularly useful. In these images, you can see that the gymnast is looking forward for a long time and she's controlling the opening to the top and in the handstand. Then, to make the movement more specific, just have her split the legs and step down by doing a front walkover. Another way to work on controlling the opening and amount of rotation is to work on landing the back handspring on the stomach. With this element, the gymnast must keep the hips open until she lands and adequately control the movement through the handstand in order to land gently. Before you start this move, first have the gymnast do a handstand landing on the stomach, then a back bridge followed by a landing on the stomach. As in previous exercises, you'll need to spot this one at first. Finally, if you have a trampoline and your gymnasts know how to use it, you can do this exercise which stresses the lifting of the hips in the inversion. This is a flick flack handstand starting from the seated position. Although the gymnast is doing it alone here, gymnasts work up to that, in particular after being spotted, which we'll see next. The unusual thing about this drill is that it starts from the seated position because the gymnast drops in closed position with the arms forward and horizontal. The chest must be slightly back so she can go backward while turning. Here, because there's no leg repulsion, the emphasis is on the lifting of the hips and the swing forward and this will be useful later for the back handspring twist or back handspring onodi. As for the progression, first you'll show the gymnast the specific position on the mat, both in the arms and for the chest angle. 
Then you'll have a start with a seat drop followed by a landing on the back in your arms. Here the biggest challenge is yours. You need to determine the right time to jump. In general you must start getting ready to jump when the mat starts going down. And you need to move forward when she leaves the mat. From here have her do the arm movement to land in the handstand. Then the same thing but with the arm movement. Then gradually you'll stop less and support the move a little bit more. Here you need to pay attention to the landing on the hands. If you jump at the wrong moment, this could be unpleasant for the gymnast. And to conclude, a spotting and sandwich hold so the gymnast starts to feel that she can do it alone. Controlling the takeoff with legs squeezed and then split. This aspect of the skill has already been practiced in the exercises we saw with the roller and with the flick flack when stepping down in the front walkover. Here are other scenarios that can focus your gymnast's attention on this important movement chronology for the back handspring on the beam. In this scenario, the idea is to achieve the flexion and extension of both legs before the split, with the opening position resembling that of landing in the handstand. Now for another scenario with the rebounder. Here the gymnast will use the elastics to help to lift the body and as a reference point for the back leg. The gymnast must feel both that she's lifting first with the leg squeezed and then when she splits, the back leg stays behind toward the elastic. This is also an excellent shoulder strengthening exercise. Working on staggering the hands. We're now going to take a look at the movement that the gymnast undoubtedly thinks is the most important one, putting the hands down in staggered position. The goal of all the exercises we're going to see is to learn to land with one hand in front of the other, on a line or a beam, and with the shoulders on the axis. Once gymnasts learn this placement, they'll be able to start to progress from the floor to the high beam. To start, we'll do an exercise without a flight element, resembling the back bridge. Because we always want to contextualize what we're doing, it's best to have the gymnast start on a beam. And from there, enter a bridge first with the hand spread and then gradually staggered. Here the gymnast learns to start with the visual reference point on the beam. Then to open the squeeze shoulders, look for the visual reference point behind her and stagger the hands. This also allows her to start to react to the impact on the block while staying on the axis. With this setup, you'll be able to easily work on three crucial aspects of the move. You'll be working on the movement of the arms by lengthening and on opening in order to turn, on the lifting of the pelvis and on the staggering of the arms. On the first attempts and with the arm spread, the gymnast will be able to learn to look at the line before landing. Then because she's turning slowly, she'll be able to take the time to position her hands correctly. Then to continue in the same vein, but with a bit more speed, you can use a foam block in an inclined position. You'll recreate the three main movements of the previous exercise with the addition of the concept of impact on the floor and reaction in the arms and shoulders. She'll start with the arms spread, then she'll stagger them. Because she's starting to gain speed and the landing needs to be more stable, you'll see more compensation. Continue to make sure that the pelvis is on the axis with the hips even. Check continually that the shoulders are perpendicular to the line and that the ribs are even. It's also useful to watch the rhythm of the head movement so the gymnast can avoid obvious anticipation, even if on the beam it's natural to look back much sooner than on the floor. 
Here's a particularly useful exercise, the back walkover with the hand staggered. This exercise is very good because it's even more like the back handspring and because you can also have gymnasts do it on the high beam. For this they'll first learn to do it on the floor on a line. Then quickly on the high beam. Some gymnasts may need to go through different stages. Low beam, beam with a mat, etc. Once they get to this stage, the gymnasts realize that they're capable of turning backward and putting their hands down in staggered position. The back handspring will come quickly. Another little exercise that could be useful, although it's not required, is a series of front and back handsprings on the trampoline, putting the hands down in staggered position on the back handspring. Here too, the gymnast can feel that when she swings the arms forward, they're spread, and that just before they touch the mat, they're staggered. Working on the feeling of the handstand position with the body open. In this part, we'll see exercises that are focused mainly on the feeling of the position when the hands make contact on the back handspring. The essential goal is the placement of the hands with lengthening and holding the axis in the shoulders. The idea is to hold an open position with the hands on the beam. As you see here, you can use a support on an inclined block or a rectangular block. 